Welcome to Go Solo Live. Don't you mean Go Solo Live? Have you ever been asked, why on earth would you travel alone? Go Solo Live not only answers that question, but celebrates life as a midlife solo traveler. This is a safe place for women to come together to reminisce about their travels, encourage others to travel, and to dig into the real lessons learned from these journeys. Now join Jennifer Buchholz with Transform Via Travel as she and her guests share stories of the solo travelers of midlife women. So good morning, everyone. This is Jennifer Buchholz with Transform Via Travel, and you're here for Go Solo Live. We're here on Blab with Taloria Grant. And today we're going to be talking about just some of the midlife travels, her experiences in Italy, and other opportunities that she has to offer some of our listeners. In addition, it's time to interact. This is a great opportunity for you to ask questions, for you to you know, share a little bit about where you're at and what is inspiring you to possibly go solo. What Transform Via Travel does is I help women go on solo journeys of self-discovery. And I will be announcing at the end of our show today, a couple exciting things that we have going on. But for now, it's all about Taloria and one full life. Taloria, will you please introduce yourself to us? Ah, Thanks, Jennifer. I'm so excited to be here. Um, My name is Tayloria. Just to give you a little bit about uh, my journey, which I'll be talking about today, I spent 20 years in corporate America in marketing and public relations and had a great career. After, um, in 2014, I guess I'll just start uh, start there, I embarked upon my own personal uh, journey of self-discovery. A lot of that was things happening in my life. I went through a divorce um, just a couple years before, uh, as well as a career change. I really made that decision in 2014. Um, I want to do something different. And so well, that year, I actually went to Italy Um not really knowing that was going to be the start of my uh, journey, but it really opened my eyes in so many ways and having the freedom, having the time to reflect. I know we'll talk a, a, a lot about that, but um, how did, uh, I, I became an entrepreneur from that. And so with One Full Life, um, really what I do now is English language coaching, um, as well as helping women uh, with uh, travel and self-discovery as well, uh, mainly through new experiences and retreats. Awesome. Awesome. Well, so you talked a little bit about where you were at with, you know, it was 2014 and you were just a couple of years fresh from a divorce. What else was going on in your life at that time that really made you decide, I need to get away? You know, it was a combination. And I have to to have to say, after my divorce, um, I'm very fortunate. My kids mean the world uh, to me and my ex-husband. And with my career, I was really realizing I was missing a lot, a lot on their lives. And time doesn't slow down. Um, Missing, you know, gymnastics, never being able to go on field trips. And that's no fault of anyone else. It just was I had to make a tough decision on do uh, if things aren't going to change in my environment, I need to change (laughs) my environment and my circumstances. And so I I went to Italy when I was 16 and fell in love and wanted to get back. But life happens. And so I initially thought I was going to go on a a woman's uh, trip. I had been looking and I had priced it and saved. And with the job, I kept getting pushed back with projects. And one friend of mine who does a lot of travel, um, solo travel, was really uh, inspirational for me. Um, I realized through my life I had had gone on small little trips in the United States, but never embarked overseas. And... Even my ex was supportive, supportive. I quit my job. So (laughs) I thought, I don't know if I won't be working for five months, five weeks, uh, you know, however long. But he said, no, you've been saving for this trip. Um, This is something you want to do and go. And so between my friend, the support um, of my ex, I went. I went uh, went alone. Um, And it was amazing. (laughs) It was amazing. And it really, I think, has inspired me. I still have family trips. I still have girlfriend trips. But for me, I really look forward to those times when it's just me. It's a sense of freedom. Um, 
I've learned so much about myself, uh, as well as I think even when I'm going back in September um, and bringing uh, uh, other women is it's something that's just so liberating. But at the same time, um, it just gives you, I don't know, Jennifer, just so many things. <laughs> Trust me, you're, <laughs> you're preaching to the choir. I mean, that's for it's sure. Addictive. It's addictive. It is addictive. And it's that hard, is. you know, it's like sometimes when I, I get um, a little jealous, when I have to share my time and space yeah. with other people when I travel, I'm like, no, you don't understand. I need to go do this alone. And yes. You know, then you. So, a couple of the words that we'll we'll come back to at, in different points. So, you use the word freedom, and and we'll yes. come back to this. But other words that have started to emerge through these interviews has been security. So the 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 safety thing, and really, I want to talk a bit about that later yes. as well, and how how you know your ex felt or your family felt or things like that with security, as well as in a really positive way, the word selfish. So those are a couple of themes that keep emerging as we talk about solo travel. But my real question right now is why Italy? Yes. Well, when I was 16 and um, just kind of jumping, I guess, try to give you the cliff notes version of this because Mm -hmm. I was very fortunate. I, I realized as I have done some reflection that travel has been one of my passions even early on. My grandmother taking me at the age of six and being on the airline and visiting her friend in college in Connecticut. So for me, I think it, it that was even just the start of opening my eyes. I was raised um, by a single mother and um, overall in poverty, but being able to see there's more to life. People do things a different way and my dreams are possible. And so with Italy, um, again, I was very fortunate. There was a small school, school, uh, it was a counselor and a small group of students who would go. She would take them, I think, every couple of years. And I didn't have the money. Um, Really through her uh, for two years, I worked. I um, cleaned her house. She had a Mary Kay business, even learning about entrepreneurship early on. She got her pink Cadillac. Um, But it it felt good. I was able through working with her uh, as well to save, to go to Italy, Italy and Greece. I should mention I did go somewhere else. (laughs) So, but I fell in love with Italy. And so that was really the, when I was 16, um, I would love to say I'm 21, but no, it was a long time ago. So it took me a long time to get back there. And from that, when you say why Italy, What I really, I think, felt at the age of 16, when I went back in 2014, I went back 2015, 2016. I've been back. (laughs) I've been back a lot, and I won't let that time uh, go as long again. Um, I found that a lot of things that I like, a lot of my uh, beliefs and um, things that I enjoy are in Italy. So I do travel to other places. (laughs) I was just in Mexico. Um, But... Things like my faith. Um, I'm a foodie. So, I mean, I love Italian food. Um, Many things about the culture, but the people. And I think that's what you really realize. Each place has its uniqueness. Um, It's not that I don't enjoy other places, but it really has started to feel like my second home. And uh, through that, too, of course, now... I mean, when I went in 2014, I didn't really know many people. Um, I had language exchange partners. But with that to say, I think the more you you, uh, have solo travel, and at least for me, I step outside of my comfort zone. I usually am more of an introvert, but travel, I've become more of an adventurer. And I've been very fortunate to meet people and make friends, whether that's other trips in the future or even returning and having those experiences like a local because I have made those friendships now. I think that's awesome. Um, You know, that whole, there's so many of us introverts out there and there's, I think, a misconception that solo travel is very lonely. Yeah, I, I would agree but it's only as lonely as you want it to be. I mean, some people really do need that complete isolation. Nothing wrong with that, but man, I am so much more friendly and outgoing when I don't have to worry about other impressions. It's just Mm -hmm. me and somebody from another area. Well, and I think 
Sometimes I, I just encourage women because depending on your comfort zone, there's different ways to do to do solo travel, to have solo travel. And I'll just give you an experience and um, an example in 2014, because when I went, I'm, my actual problem was more of a. Uh, planning. I realized in life, I, I, I love planning. I get a great sense of joy. But when I travel and from that experience, I've learned to be more in the moment, being more in the present. And that's a little uncomfortable for a planner. So with that, I, I, I the first time I went, I actually booked a portion of my trip at a language school for one week. Sure. So it was a balance. I had my days that I was truly alone, um, exploring Milan, uh, doing things really by myself, completely by myself. And then I had a little bit of, okay, I have the rest of the day by myself, but I have a couple hours in a, a group setting or, you know, with um, with someone. Yeah. So I think sometimes just that idea of solo travel, you can really make it what you want it to be. Um, it doesn't have to be lonely and scary. You can sign up for a day tr a day tour. You can do a cooking class. Um, I think it's sometimes when we're waiting on our friends, people may not have money. They can't get off of uh, work. It can basically uh, cause us not to travel because we're waiting on someone else or we have a fear. And so for me, I think that's just been very liberating to say, I want to go. I'm going to go. And even my first trip, I ironically, I had a friend from Albuquerque who had just quit his job to join his wife and I met them for dinner one night. Awesome. <laughs> so I kind of I just want women to know solo travel doesn't also mean alone. There's other ways to still have that companionship um, or experiences with other women. I have a friend. She's going to Sicily. She met another woman. They have so much in common. They're going to meet. They're still going to have some solo travel, yep. but they're going to do some things together. It is absolutely all about balance. And I, too, I have my like regular routines. I love doing a walking tour of a city. I try mm -hmm. to do a bicycle tour of a city. Ah, cool. You know, uh, if I can do a cooking class, I'm pretty happy. And then I feel I try to do one of those types of tours really early on when I get to a yes. new place. Because then I have a comfort level with the lay of the land and the landmarks. And and those tour guides are awesome because they give you those little secret tips that you might not Definitely. have gotten. So, and you can make friends. Hey, what? It, and then you find out from them, well, what have you done? And what did you like about it? And maybe you connect later and grab a dinner or something. But it's just, it breaks the ice in a way that creates comfort. Yes. And you learn so much, just like what you told me. If you don't go on solo travel, you won't know. I really like the cooking class. I really, you know, you won't even know. That's what I've learned. And of course, each place lends itself better to different experiences. But I, I'm, I'm still on this journey. But each time I'm learning certain things that I like and don't like. Uh, public transportation, how right. not just cost effective, but you get to see more locals. You get to experience maybe some other uh, things that you wouldn't if you just took a taxi everywhere or didn't, you know, really um, venture out. Um, or you can say, I don't like it. Like, <laughs> um, you know, those are, I think, unless you experience it, you don't get to start crafting what your vacation and what your dream uh, vacation looks like. So I think that's something I, I really have enjoyed and I'm starting to see, okay, you like this, you like that. So I, I would agree. Um, I want to do a bike, a bike tour. <laughs> you know, it depends on what city you're in um, yes. because some cities have a lot more hills than others, but True. even um, when my sister and I were at a conference out in Denver, um, hmm. I'd never been to Denver before. I'm like, let's go do a bike tour. And then, man, we just had such a better sense of where we were, a better appreciation for it. It was something fun we could do together. And it ended up that we, we were the only two on the bike tour mm -hmm. that day. So then it was like a private tour. Exactly. Even more special. Absolutely. So, so I want, you have this amazing passion for Italy. 
And I want you, and we're going to be talking later about this trip that you have coming up with a group to Italy, but I want you to kind of paint the picture of Italy. If somebody's never been there and they're getting off the plane and they're getting immersed into whichever city you're, you would, you know, it yeah. encourage them to go to first paint wow. the picture and give them the feeling. <laughs> it's going to be hard to narrow, but you know, I was thinking as we were going to talk today, I said, wow, I like this place. I like this place. I want, I, I will mention, well, I'll mention Milan first because I think it um, sometimes it might get a bad rap. It is, a, you know, it's a city. It's more um, commercial. Um, it's not necessarily the, the quaint town in, in Tuscany. But for me, uh, um, part of the, the awe is when I went in 2014, I remember getting off the plane going um, that second day, that second day that I really explore, started to explore. I love fashion. So again, I think when we're thinking about where do we want to go, what do I like to do? Um, everybody doesn't like fashion. Right. <laughs> so I wanted to walk through the districts, maybe just not yet. I couldn't afford some of those places, but the window shopping, the, the beauty. And as I went through that district and I started, I was using my GPS that day. And I just remember getting right to the, the square and seeing, because it's busy, it's subways and cars. And right when I got to the square and I saw the Duomo and just the magnitude, it was, it was almost magical. I mean, I've been to Disneyland and I, I even like, <laughs> that was truly magical, but it was a different type of beauty. It's, I mean, just seeing the people and, and I mean, just the, the cathedral was breathtaking for me in a different way. I mean, I've yeah. been to the Grand Canyon, but a different type of beauty. And so I, I liked a little bit of the hustle and the bustle, you know, seeing people eating and um, couples, you know, at the fountain, maybe sharing a special moment. And when I went inside for me, because I look at transformation in so many different areas. I mean, it may be personal, financial, professional, and then also spiritual. And it wasn't a matter so much of what religion. Um, it gave me the opportunity when I went in, just seeing the architecture. Uh, it's, of course, Gothic inspired. Um, but when I walked in and they had the candlelight visual and I just sat there and just reflected I mean, it was such a peace and such a quietness that I didn't have, whether it was my children or a friend saying, oh, blah, 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 this or that. It just was me. And that's one thing I really do like about Italy. When you were saying, what do you like to do? I know now when I go, I love going to many of the cathedrals. If there's a cathedral in town, I want to go. Um, and so... Almost, you know, of course, it's Italy. Uh, there's many beautiful cathedrals. And so that is one thing that's very charming for me, uh, but also very, um, it gives me a lot of tranquility, a lot of peace. Um, when I go, I, I enjoy just being able to take in the architectural beauty, but also to be able to have some personal time of reflection. Mm -hmm. So that's one. <laughs> well, and I can totally relate. I, you know what, for some reason, it seems that no matter what city I go to and, you know, no matter what my religious beliefs are, yes. those churches really draw me in and it's a place to take a moment and take a deep breath. And I mm -hmm. just... I just give a moment of thanks that exactly. I'm able to be in that time and space. And, you know, I think part of that is about getting grounded and centered and being completely present with Definitely. yourself and your surroundings. Okay. So that was just one. So keep going. <laughs> so I say that, that was one. Another thing I really like and um, encourage people is sometimes to look for places off the beaten path. I mean, I must say with Italy this last time, I, and I'll be going back to Venice, um, I've been to Rome, uh, some of the, the places that maybe are more touristy. But one area that I really have fallen in love with and why would someone want to go to Italy, I really feel a lot of people don't know about the March region. Um, 
So for me, I stumbled upon it. One thing I, I, I should mention on my journey, I always wanted to be fluent in a language. I'm not there yet. I thought it would be Spanish. I studied a little Spanish in high school and college. I need to practice, but I think I just didn't have the passion um, as well uh, for Spanish. I'm not giving up, uh, but with that, um, I started studying Italy um, uh and I will just say my, I will say the age. So when I went in 2014, it was, I just turned 40. <laughs> so I, that I think just with having that landmark birthday, yep. it also brought, okay, life is, you know, I may have many more years, but life is short. I want to do some things I want, that I haven't done. And so I started learning Italian um, awesome. at the age of 40. And so when I was, I um, had some language exchange partners, I met um, a young lady um, who's Italian and lived in that region. Uh, we did a couple of Skypes, but with our schedules, we didn't talk a lot. So I at least knew from her and another friend, too, who I met through language exchange about the area. So when I was looking at language schools, it really stumbled. I mean, I had no idea. And when I went... Oh, my gosh. It is um, on the Adriatic Sea. It's a small town, oh, Camarano. Wow. And National Park, something else uh, surprising. I don't necessarily consider myself an outdoor person or uh, nature, but with travel, <laughs> I'm, I'm taking some risk. Yep. But when I went, um, it was a small town, a small little village on a hill. Um, so, I mean, Rolling Hills, they're known for wine. They're known uh, a lot for nature. But the beauty, the beauty of being up there and just seeing the Adriatic Sea, um, being able to wake up. I was learning Italian and no one really spoke English. And so talk about immersion. Uh, I was able to go in the morning and in my eight months of studying, trying you know, to say, you know, un cafe or <laughs> you know something like that I would like a coffee um, but it it got me again outside of my comfort zone don't be afraid I was afraid um, but what is the worst that can happen exactly I, I point to it <laughs> yeah, exactly. so, I did it starve and so um, and really I came back uh, speaking better um, but again, just taking taking that risk. And so I say that for, again, Italy, there are so many beautiful places, but sometimes it's not even the major cities that you might find that you fall in love with um, and the people. And so I have been very fortunate. You mentioned about the bike tour, um, Jennifer. I went off season. OK, I'm also, I'm also very interested in budget travel. Sure. And so with that, um I saved a lot of money, but unbeknownst to me, I arrived. I'm the only student at the language school. So I got spoiled. <laughs> I got I got to meet the owner's friends, his wife, his his mother cooked me homemade lasagna and they invited me. And even though she didn't speak English, she was I could understand and they helped me with certain parts. But you know, having her sitting at their table and saying, I made this pasta for you. Right. It was wow. just incredible. I mean, just you see how many nice people are still in this world. How many people? I think sometimes you can get a little jaded seeing everything Absolutely. going on. So another great experience. <laughs> Absolutely. That sounds awesome. It was. So let's go to, you know, again, you were at a turning point in your life. You were you were ready for, you know, whatever was coming next. And part of this journey was not only you enjoying the fabulous travel and the being alone and taking care of yourself, but it was partly about figuring out what was going to be next for you. Yes. What were, what were some of your growth experiences or lessons learned that, that you brought into that next phase when you returned home? You know, I have to say, a well, a couple of things, maybe when you, I want to say about the joy, there are some challenges. There are some challenges sometimes when you um, have solo travel. Um, but I also look at those as positives. 
Um, as I, you know, was reflecting, uh, something very minor, maybe I realized, uh, just some of the differences, my, my Italian friends, um, kind of laugh at me when I go back, they said, are you ready to get back to your microwave or to your, uh, dryer? <laughs> but in general, a lot of people hang up their clothes. You yeah. don't find dryers. Um, and so this is a very small challenge, but, um, I was embarrassed. I realized in 40 years, I had never hung up clothes on a clothesline. You know, even my Italian friend, one of them laughed and said, but Tay, I thought you said you were poor. I said, well, even poor Americans have a dryer <laughs> or um, <laughs> or access to a laundry mat. Sure? So I remember being in uh, Camarano, which is in the March region, and on the third floor, and it took me to her probably an hour to just slowly and even to work the washing machine because it was different. And I looked on YouTube but I couldn't find it. And I mean, it wasn't, you know, a, a make or break, but right. it's um, that feeling of even something so simple as that I can do it. It may take me a while, um, <laughs> but uh, I learned how to do something new. Um, it also on, I think a more serious note it gave me some time to start saying what's important to me in life. Um, a dryer is okay. Maybe, <laughs> maybe it is important, but it's not, I mean, on, on a serious note, it, I can still have clean clothes. I can still, um, you know, get around, but I started also to see, um, what is important? I mean, not one travel. I, I don't, as I told you, I don't want to miss out on that opportunity. It's not unfortunate. I mean, I, I got married. I had children. I had a great career. But how do I still fit that in? How do I still have some of that passion? And I have. I went back. I went back even less than six months um, after I went in 2014. And I've, I've gone every year, every year since. Awesome. Um, but also it, it caused me both in my personal life to start making some changes. Um, people live a lot simpler yes. in many places, including Italy. Uh, because one, they don't have a lot of space um, in general if they live in a, in a city area, which is why um, part of the culture, but also why a lot of people don't have dryers. Things are smaller. And for me, as I started to, I came back and started to reflect, I mean, with divorce, yes, I have a large house, uh, but it has to be cleaned. I want to, I'm often not here as much. Um, I started to purge. I don't like as much of the clutter. I want to be freer to travel. Um, and for my children, I mean, we, we started to think a little differently. The more that we're exposed to people of different cultures and faiths or you know religions and things it really gives you a sense to say yes someone may do something different but how does that fit into my life are there any changes I want to make so I hope Jennifer that that answers a little bit but that's more of the the personal transformation um I'm still it didn't happen immediately with the the professional um, transformation, but I think it just opened, started to open up the door, the, at least the thought process. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're going to come up to that professional stuff in just a moment. Um, I know one of the things when I got back from one of my trips was I started reading the book Essentialism and Essentialism yeah. is just about living smaller and, and just having what you need. And it, it really is just, again, Americans have a particular perspective on yes. what we need to get by. <laughs> and when you yes. travel, you start to see, oh, maybe that's not a need. Um, mm -hmm. And I just, I just returned from Bogota, Colombia, and I, I had that realization frequently. Yes, I, I would agree. I have to add that book um, to my list as well. And I will even say with, with for me, books as well as personal journal journaling has been amazing. Um, you usually have more time, whether it's even at just a coffee shop, uh, to be able to even do some more structured uh, reflection. And so, um, for me, the alchemist during that time was really big. Uh, um, yes, I even laugh because I think it was my second trip in 2015, um, going to 
I think it was going to Paris, but Eat, Love, Pray was yeah. one of the options. <laughs> and I, wa- I watched it. And so, um, you know, just taking those opportunities and even sometimes uh, more structured ways or fun ways uh, to, to have some self-awareness, you know. So, so it's, it's been fun. And I, I'm excited, Jennifer. Um, I'll be leaving. Well, I'm going on just a short trip to Austin uh, next week. But um, when I go back, I'm going to do this. <laughs> oh, yay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so I started reading, but um, things have been really busy. But what I really like is, um, some, I mean, I'm seeing you have questions that I have not done. Um, you know, different types of questions about travel, about uh, my own journey. And so I am. Um, I'm not just trying to pl- plug your book, but in actuality, I am really looking forward uh, for me as well as um, the women that are going. We're going to use that as a guide, as a guide for some of those questions. So I'm excited. Yes. And so um, I think back to I think what my part of my takeaway, two things. One, I am I'm really looking forward to reading the book going solo and utilizing it on the create um, recreate yourself um, retreat in September. But I um, just to share with you, Jennifer, I as as I have been reading about self discovery, um, I've also picked up some different books on to help to help prompt you basically different journals. Yeah. Um, and so I have quite a few of those. So I was very excited um, when you launched um, and where uh, the book and just received my copy, I guess about a week and a half ago, um, because it already takes out some of the guesswork, but it also is in the context of travel. Absolutely. I mean, many of these are journaling, personal journaling, which is it's still good um, to reflect. But I'm very excited as I was perusing some of the questions. I didn't want to get um, too far ahead, but um, to be able to uh, for other for others as well. Absolutely. Cool. Taloria. Well, I'd love for you to tell us a little bit about what you have coming up in September. Tell us Perfect. about your business and the trip and everything. Yes. And so as I've had... Um, as I've been going back to Italy, a lot of uh, posts, of course, on like Facebook or Instagram, and I had several acquaintances or friends really tell me, oh, you're so brave. How can you um, do it? I would love to go to Italy. I would love to just travel solo. And for me, now that I've done it (laughs) um, and more than once, I thought, well, you can, you know, why you can, why wouldn't you? But having some conversations, there are certain fears, um, whether it's uh, I have children. I mean, I have two children, but I, I'm very fortunate. But at the same time, I've had to be creative um, and take them into account. When can I solo travel? How can I solo travel? Um, sometimes it's money. Sometimes it is the fear of doing it alone. And so I want to stop. I think there there's as we know, of course, biz, being a busy professional too, finding the, the time to go. But with this, it prompted me to do a retreat slash tour um, for women. I, I think, Jennifer, as we're talking, we both have, uh, have gone through and continue to go through self-transformation and leverage travel to um, find out even more about ourselves and how life continues to change. And so with this, what really inspired me as women began to ask me and friends um, is to create something, create something where very personalized um, that to give women the experience to have more self-discovery. The way I think it, it also differs is I have also built in some free time. So it's not as maybe scary to say, I have to actually book my ticket. I'm going to be in a city all by myself. No, Um, keeping it small, uh, but hoping with that too, with the um, like-minded women who are at different stages, whether it's loss of a loved one or divorce or career change, or just want some adventure. Um, That there's like-minded women who also are willing to take this plunge, take this leap, um, and I'm there. I'm there. So really, for those that maybe not that don't feel as comfortable, um, one, I'm able to say these are some great opportunities, whether it is at a church, a cathedral um, to reflect on your spiritual uh, journey or 
Uh, maybe you want to try new food and um, we're going to do things like cooking classes and going to a winery. Um, but really giving them those opportunities and then they have free time if they choose um, to do what they want. To, 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 uh, so it's almost like maybe baby steps for some. Um, for the woman maybe who has traveled a lot, it still is an opportunity to be with like-minded women and try something new. Uh, we're going to do Venice. I mean, Venice uh, for those maybe who have gone or haven't. But I have to say, I just was there in April. Um, it's no place like it. <laughs> awesome. So uh, I think for me, and um, if there's n- there's not a city like it. Um, I really think one of the great things uh, with this, what I've strived to do with this um adventure is to give some new experiences as well um, that aren't just the cookie cutter. Yes, there are tours that go um, to Venice, but we'll do Venice, um, which I think you have to see if you haven't seen it, or if you've seen it, you probably also fell in love with it, possibly. Uh, But there is a small town outside of it also called Kyoja. And Kyoja is known as Little Venice. And many people have never been. And so I was able just um, in April to go. I have a couple of Italian friends that live in the area. And it was amazing. It's not as crowded. Um, They had a market. um, In fact, uh, oh, no, I got these in Venice. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Um, I took my bracelet off. But, but yes, Murano glass. Nice. Um, But... You, you discover some new things. Or even go, we, I did a boat ride and locals were on there. And it was just beautiful to see, you know, the canals. And it's, it's not Venice. But, um, but there's a lot about Venice I think is still appealing. Um, one thing I, I must say, too, as I was talking about the different areas, I, I love seeing more of Italy. I want to see more of Italy. Each time I go, I try to see something different. Nice. But a lot of my um, experiences have been in Northern Italy. And a lot of the friendships I've made have been in Northern Italy. So that also was part of it. I have um, sure. friends there. Um, another place that will go is Bologna. So some of this is known, but also some maybe not as touristy places. Sure. Um, if you're a foodie, which I am, I love Bologna. That area is known. Some of the other places people might have heard. Um, there's Parma there, like Parma ham. Modena is known for um, the vinegars um, and so nice. and the, the olive oil. And so um, it's amazing, the food. I'm getting hungry. It's only, know, uh, right? it's only 848 here. <laughs> But um, but a big part of that is, but then there's the oldest university. There's um, in the square, we're going to do actually a walking tour. I did the walking tour and there are, I think it's, we get the number right, but seven um, hidden secrets. And one of my Italian friends went with me um, and he's lived there and he didn't know. He's, and so we chuckle because they don't tell you the secrets. They only showed us a couple. So he said, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to go back and find out the other's, um, ah. secrets. And I'm like, you must. <laughs> That's awesome. So even someone that li- you know, lived there had it. So we'll have some adventures like that. And then just to end it, um, the place that I fell in love with, the March region. Um, and I have to say, even my friends who have live in Italy and many people who have gone, they haven't explored the March region. Nice. And so for someone who even maybe doesn't like to just tour like a tourist, we are going to be able to see Italy as close to a local as we probably can. Um, and so there I've teamed up with, uh, his name is Marco, but it's um, the language school there. Great. And he is, uh, uh, we really, we sat down and really talked about women. How does this differ from his language school? Um, but I'm excited. We're going to do the cooking class. We are going to a winery. We're going to Urbino, which is actually on a, uh, the UNESCO um, world site. Cool. And so there's the, the Duke's um, palace. And I think another one is Loretto. And I have to say when I went in 2014, it is the second most visited cathedral in Italy for pilgrimages. But when he, when we were looking and had uh, Marco was telling me, I was amazed there was a replica uh, that actually, um, 
Christopher Columbus brought back <laughs> because I think the saint there, they protect uh, every, I guess, everything with transportation. Okay. So like ships and boats, but seeing that, I like history too. So seeing that, I was like, oh my gosh, that's like before America <laughs> was even here, you know, was discovered per se. That's so awesome. um, all of that to say, Jennifer, I get just as excited because even though we're talking about solo travel, like this combination, I am able to help other women have their own mini solo travel yes. experience. But I have such a passion for Italy and my friends are excited. They're like, hey, we're ready. They're going to come to dinner uh, with us in some of the different cities. And so I get to show, too, why do I love Italy? Absolutely. And what does it have to offer? Um, And hopefully they don't have to come back with me, but it opens the door, whether it's Italy or other countries, to have um, to just have some experiences, um, I think, as women. Uh, and it becomes addictive. <laughs> I've already warned one of the ladies who's going, we're going to meet on Monday uh, uh, online. And I just told her, I said, get ready, get ready because and she is, she's already talking about a cruise and yep. she's ready. Yep. She'll, it's What's your next trip is the, is the best, you know, conversation to have. Exactly. So I think it, um, I, I just get just as excited. And so it'll, uh, it'll be an adventure. And I think that's really what we see with solo travel. We see the freedom, we see the adventure, um, discovering what's important in life. Uh, there's so many things that um, I think it lends learning to, to be a leader, um, to take risks, but also um, it gives us the opportunity to, to transform and reinvent ourselves. Absolutely. Well, Tay, I appreciate you taking the time to be with me today. And there is still, I'm sure, so many more stories to share and so much more to talk about. So make sure people know where they can find you if they want to continue this conversation. Definitely. And I think I might be able to leave it in the the chat box as well. Uh, But um, they can find me. So my um, company um, is One Full Life. And it really is going into what I'm striving to do. I believe you don't have to have a perfect life. It doesn't exist. But really a, a full and satisfying life is taking opportunities and living life um, each day, each day in the present and in the, in the moment, whether that's travel or languages, you can accomplish your goals and dreams. And so um, onefullife.com. Um, also, I am on several social medias. And so either Tayloria or One Full Life, you can find me. So I'm on Twitter and Instagram. My daughter has me on Snapchat. I'm still learning. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and so and Facebook. Uh, we also have a Facebook page. So if they would like more information, um, whether it's for the upcoming uh, women's retreats, we still have a couple spots um, left and available uh, for September, um, as well as I'm, uh, if they want to sign up, sign up for, I have a couple of freebies. I have um, how to travel on a tight budget without breaking the bank. It's a 15 minute audio guide, as well as um, an infographic, just with some great tips. If, um, who doesn't like to save money? So even if they just want to, if you'd like to sign up, if you'd like to sign up for some freebies um, and be informed about future trips, I, I we will do a similar uh, trip to Italy in 2017. So I'll be putting that out for women to want to sign up and we even will have a payment plan. So awesome. It's, it's attainable. <laughs> Well, and thanks again for joining us today, Tay, and for all of our viewers as well as our listeners. This is Go Solo Live with Transform Via Travel and Jennifer Buchholz. Our guest today was Tayloria Grant with Thank One you. Full Life. Transform Via Travel helps women go on journeys of self-discovery using travel. Our next event will be taking women to Dominican Republic and Haiti in a small group authentic practice where we will be able to live with locals as tourists and have some of these awesome experiences where we'll be able to do tours, we'll be able to have time to ourselves and explore why we need to travel. There's also other ways to connect, whether you're connecting with Transform Via Travel via Facebook, joining our meetup, joining the podcast, or buying the book, Go Solo, A Savvy Woman's Guide to Transformation and Self-Discovery Through Travel. We'd love to hear more from you. Thanks again from Jennifer and Taloria and have a great day.